what's up everybody it's your girl B Octavia and I am back with another video welcome to my channel if you are new my name is B Octavia I am 24 years old and I'm from Washington DC it's about to be the new year but we can't end off the year without talking about a major problem that really has been weighing on my mind <music> speak on this issue let me tell you more about me so I'm a mom my child is almost four years old and I'm also an entrepreneur with my own cosmetics and skincare business called crush on you beauty make sure that you check the site for what's new for what's restocked and for what's coming soon so this major issue that I want to speak on with you guys is pregnant black women dying during childbirth and this year specifically that has been at a all-time high I want to tell you two tragic scenarios um, of pregnant black women losing their lives during childbirth the different complications that they had and why I feel like pregnant black women and Pregnant minority women in general deserve better service, including myself. With me mentioning these two scenarios and these two beautiful black women, I want to talk about my situation as well and how it is relatable to this major issue. And I feel like the women that have died in the past and recently, they all deserve justice. And hugely, I want to speak on how a lot of information was not told to me and is not told to pregnant minority women. You know, in the different trimesters, things that are related to our health, things that can help us not only carry a child full term, but to have a healthy delivery. And also, what could have been better for me and what could have been better for these women that have lost their lives. Because we are the vessels. You know, it's a very beautiful thing to conceive a child and to have a child, but a lot of people don't take into consideration everything that the vessel has to go through. It's not only about the delivery and the labor. You know, pregnancy is very hard. And to have, you know, high blood pressure come out of nowhere while you're pregnant, diabetes, and a long list of serious conditions that can make it so hard for you to even carry your child full term and survive labor. Um, the first tragic scenario that I do want to talk about is, is the pregnant YouTube star Nicole Thea. Nicole passed away earlier this year on July 11th, 2020. Previous to her passing while she was at home resting, she told her partner, boyfriend, soon to be fiance, I don't know if they were close to marriage, but they probably were. She told him that she was having chest pains and her back was in pain as well. The family expressed before her cause of death was revealed that, that she was a dancer and they didn't think that she had any underlying conditions or anything that they didn't know about that could relate to her death. So, Nicole Thea was a UK-based YouTube personality. She was a dancer and a accessory designer. Her videos documenting her pregnancy were the most popular videos before her passing. People were genuinely happy to see her go along her pregnancy journey as her and her partner were very excited and as they prepared for their bundle of joy family believed early on that nicole had a massive heart attack 
and I believe that the family is suing the hospital for negligence because they sent Nicole to the wrong wing of the hospital as she was complaining constantly about, about her chest pains. I feel like the doctors put her, you know, where the pregnant women go and were solely focusing on the child and monitoring the child, but the vessel has to be okay. And they didn't check on our heart soon enough. Unfortunately, in this scenario, Nicole and her unborn child did pass away. And it was very sad to see it was all over the internet. And I believe it was the funeral of the mother and the child. And we seen the father of the child and her partner just breaking down. The whole thing was very terrible because they were so excited, you know. A child is a blessing, but a lot of times people aren't in the right situation and they don't have, you know, a lot of love to give or they don't have a lot of money to give. So, so a child coming into the world is a very beautiful thing, but can be stressful to a lot of people. So to see folks genuinely happy about bringing a child into the world it, it just was terrible that this happened, so I do pray that this family gets justice for both Nicole um, and her unborn son. Um, the next tragic scenario that I want to talk about is um, a pregnant New York woman dying in childbirth who sadly passed away during an emergency C-section. Another sad part about this scenario is... Her partner and the father of this child was banned from the delivery room. He was banned from being in there to support. And I believe that was due to COVID. He wasn't even able to hug her or kiss her before he had to leave the room. And according to him, all he could hear was staff going in and out of the room at a, you know, running pace. And the PA system announcing doctors to come to that area and to assist. Now, according to Isaac, which is her partner, as soon as they took the baby out during the C-section, Amber's heart stopped. Unfortunately, Amber Isaac bled out. Her blood platelets were too low and so low that her blood was like water and no blood would clot, which is just tragic. It's very sad. It's important to note that since COVID has been among us for some time now, Amber's doctor's appointments that would usually be in person were not in person anymore. And they had to do video calls and things. And from February to March to, to early April, Amber did not have any blood work done and she was not physically checked on, which is a huge problem. Now, she did have her first in-person appointment in April. I believe it was April 17th. And after she had that appointment, it was revealed to her that her blood platelets were, were extremely low. And they were already low. But when she went back after the two months or so, they were even lower her levels were even lower, and then she was admitted into the hospital where she stayed for about three days, and then this emergency C-section was upon them. So, you know, I feel like both situations screams a lot of issues for pregnant women in general during this time, especially because I feel like, don't get me wrong, you know, I understand that things are different, but for pregnant women, I do feel like in-person appointments should be mandated, you know, even during quarantine, um, even during the pandemic, because it's very vital for us to be healthy in order to have a healthy pregnancy. It's vital for us to be healthy so that we can live, you know, in this situation, 
thank God the baby is alive and healthy and the family has set up a campaign to get exposure and justice for Amber. If I can find both campaigns and if I can find something where everybody can donate or send their well wishes, I will put that in the description. So the issues, the issues to me are this. Like I said, in-person appointments should be the only option for pregnant women because it's very vital that we check up on the baby and we make sure that we're straight as well. Something that was really relatable to my situation was the situation of Amber and it was that her blood platelets were extremely low and mines were extremely low too i did have a blood doctor that i had to go to but i felt like the iron that they were giving me was really too strong for me and maybe you know it was my ignorance to not take them the way that i was supposed to but they they had such side effects that I just couldn't operate, you know. I even stressed to them that I felt like those pills were too, almost too powerful for the state that I'm in right now. And they couldn't lower it. So, so my blood platelets were extremely low as well. And something that they didn't tell me during labor was that I was bleeding out too but they didn't talk to me about it they didn't talk to me about why I'm feeling so sluggish I read everything in my paperwork as far as the excessive bleeding I read everything in my paperwork as far as um, needs a blood transfusion but I didn't get one you know and coming home and you know, transitioning into a new mom and, you know, getting into it, it was difficult because I was so sluggish. I was so sluggish. I was so tired. And I felt like the iron pills were having that effect on me because I was pregnant, but it was the same effect after I had my child. So it just was a lot of information that they could have told me and a lot that I had to figure out on my own. I'm praying for everybody who has lost their partners or has lost their good friends or has lost their daughters due to them dying during childbirth. You know, childbirth is not easy to get through. In my opinion, it's the closest thing to death as a woman can get without, you know, somebody causing harm to them intentionally. Childbirth is not easy, but I can't fathom not being there, sluggish or not, to take care of my child and to see them born and to see what I did, you know. It's just a shame, and I'm praying for justice for both women and all women involved, all women who have been affected. You know, even Chrissy Teigen had, um, I believe it was excessive bleeding, and they couldn't stop the bleeding, so her child passed away. Like, this shit is really real. And on top of that, it's the stress of, um, of COVID and the stress of potentially getting COVID while having your baby. I had my child almost four years ago, and I'm glad I had her then because I just couldn't imagine having that type of stress on top of becoming a new mom, on top of trying to figure everything out and have a smooth delivery when you don't know what's going to happen. And especially you don't know if it's going to be your last hour or not. It's very scary. So for all pregnant minority women right now, ask as many questions as you can. Make sure that you are informed on your health, on your child's health, on what you can do better as far as supplements and just natural alternatives right now. And please be careful. I can't even imagine having to wear a mask right now and it's already very difficult to breathe while you're pregnant. So, I mean, the whole thing is very uncomfortable and I'm praying for y'all tremendously. 
And yeah, it's, it's just a very scary time and we all have to be aware of the possibilities and the major issues that are right in front of us. So leave your thoughts in the comments below and I will see y'all in my next video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in.